Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on bacteria and viruses. In this video, common structures or organelles that bacteria possess will be overviewed. Many of the specific structures that will be described in this video are shown in the picture on this slide. Bacteria are very small and simple. They do not possess many of the organelles that eukaryotic cells would. The only structures that all bacteria possess are provided on this slide. DNA, a cell wall, a cell membrane, and ribosomes. The genome, or genetic makeup, of a human consists of a couple billion bases, or letters, while the typical bacterium contains a couple million. Due to the tremendous difference in the amount of DNA between the two types of organisms, prokaryotes' DNA is organized a lot differently. While humans contain 46 linear, or lined-up, chromosomes, bacteria contain just one circular chromosome. In addition, bacteria have small circular chunks of DNA called plasmids that they can sometimes share with one another. Bacteria also contain a cell wall. While other organisms also have cell walls, the cell walls in bacteria are made up of different molecules. This will be described later in more detail. All organisms, including bacteria, contain a cell membrane, which is a selectively permeable membrane, allowing certain things in and out. Finally, all organisms, again, prokaryotes included, contain ribosomes, structures that are responsible for making proteins. Some bacteria contain other structures, we'll truly describe later, but the ones listed on this slide are the bare essentials. While some bacteria are incapable of movement on their own and are forced to eat food that comes their way, other bacteria are capable of movement. The two structures that allow bacteria to move from place to place are called cilia and flagella. Cilia are shown on the left side of the picture on this slide, illustrated in green. Most cells that have cilia possess many of them. They are often described as short, hair-like projections that allow for movement. For an analogy, this would be like hundreds of rowers on a primitive boat. Flagella, on the other hand, are long, whip-like structures that are used for movement. While most cells contain many cilia, they usually possess one or just a couple flagella. To stick with the boat analogy, flagella would almost act like a boat's motor. That is not to suggest that prokaryotes are the only organisms that are capable of movement using cilia or flagella. Many eukaryotes also contain cilia and flagella, but they are considerably different, considerably more complex. Human sperm cells would provide an example of a eukaryote that has a flagella. If you ever see a flagellum or cilia that's described to have a 9 plus 2 structure, it refers to eukaryotes in the microtubule arrangement with a more complex organelle. There are many other cell structures that some bacteria possess and others do not. Some of these structures are used for protecting bacteria and they are exhibited on this slide. The structure shown and listed on top is a capsule. A capsule is an extra layer of protection that bacteria always possess that's made up of sugar, a polysaccharide, found on the outside of the bacteria's cell wall. Bacteria that cause food poisoning in humans need to make it all the way through the mouth, the pharynx, the stomach, before they can colonize your intestines and cause disease. The stomach is very acidic and a capsule could help the bacterium survive that harsh environment. The second structure shown on this slide is an endospore. Sometimes bacteria need to go into hibernation mode if conditions become inhospitable. When bacteria form an endospore, they can lie dormant for up to years until environmental changes occur. Endospores allow anaerobic bacteria, such as tetanus or anthrax, to infect humans and provide one reason why you should boil water for a long time to purify it when it's unclean. That is the end of this video introducing bacterial structures. If you're interested in learning more about bacteria and viruses or any other topic in biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.